Have you heard of creatine? Do you plan on taking it? It's one of the most studied sports supplements with countless claims of improved strength, muscle gains, and cognition. So is it truly worth the hype? Or does it cause hair loss, and damage your kidneys? In this video, we'll answer these questions, debunk some myths, and explore the benefits and side effects. Let's get into it. But first, let's clear up some misconceptions. Creatine is not actually a muscle building supplement. Also, it's not an anabolic steroid for those worried parents. It's an energy boosting supplement and because of this, it can have a muscle building effect because you'll have more energy to lift weights at the gym and then build more muscle. So what is creatine? Creatine is a molecule that's produced in the body from amino acids, specifically arginine, glycine, and a derivative of methionine. And amino acids are the building blocks of protein. It's primarily made in the liver and kidneys and a completely normal part of your metabolism. Your body makes it every single day, around one to two grams. And once it's made, it gets transported to your muscles, your heart, your brain, and other tissues. And your brain actually makes its own creatine. It's found naturally in foods like red meats and fish. So if you want to supplement creatine, can you get enough of it from your regular diet? Typically, no. To get five grams, for example, you have to eat one kilo of steak each day, which is obviously difficult to do and obviously expensive. This effect can be compounded if you're vegetarian or vegan. So how does it work? Our bodies use adenosine triphosphate, ATP as the primary energy currency to fuel various processes, including muscle contractions during exercise. And when we perform high intensity activities like weightlifting or sprinting, our muscles require rapid and substantial supply of ATP to meet the increased energy demands. Now, when muscles contract during exercise, ATP is rapidly broken down through a process called hydrolysis. And this occurs when water reacts with ATP, leading to the separation of one of the phosphate groups from ATP. And as a result, the ATP gets converted to ADP or adenosine diphosphate. The reaction is exergonic, meaning that it releases energy. And the energy release is used to power your muscle contractions. And in our muscles, we have limited stores of ATP and these get rapidly depleted during exercise. And this is where creatine comes into play. Creatine is converted to phosphocreatin by an enzyme called creatinine kinase, and this reaction is reversible. The phosphocreatine donates its phosphate group to ADP, leading to the reformation of ATP. So you get more ATP to power muscle contractions. Make sense? And this leads on to the benefits of creatine. There's a large body of compelling evidence that demonstrates that creatine can improve your power output during resistance exercise, and this can lead to improved high intensity exercise capacity and lean body mass. The improvements are most obvious in explosive activities that require short to moderate duration bursts of high intensity exercise. So think weightlifting or explosive movements. However, creatine supplementation does not confer as much benefit in endurance sports, which don't heavily rely on ATP. Creatine effects on anaerobic running capacity have been tested in lots of studies and the results show mixed results. But overall, they suggest a small improvement in performance can be found. The benefits of creatine extend beyond improving exercise performance. Studies have shown that it can lead to increased muscle mass, enhanced muscle recovery, greater training tolerance, and may even have some cognitive benefits like reducing mental fatigue. I wouldn't go into huge detail about this, but I'll link the sources in the description below if you want to read more. So now we know what creatine does, let's discuss dosing. There's also different types of creatine on the market, but creatine monohydrate is the cheapest, most studied, and the most effective form. Doses can vary, but you'll typically get three to five grams a day advertised as the suggested dose. And this is probably enough for most people, but this doesn't factor in your lean mass, your activity levels, and most importantly, your weight. Men and women don't weigh the same. So having a blanket three grams a day for everyone doesn't really make sense. Taking bigger doses like seven to 10 grams a day may be more suitable for people with a higher amounts of muscle mass and high activity levels. So it's best to look for the safe upper limit of where you can get the most benefits with the least side effects. It's also pretty cheap and affordable, which is a bonus. You also might've heard that you need to load creatine if you're starting to take it. And this is where you take 20 grams a day, split into four doses for a period of about five to seven days. And the basic recommendation is that by loading, you can saturate your muscles faster with creatine, leading to quicker benefits. But there's actually more evidence indicating that you don't have to load creatine. Lower daily dosages of three to five grams of creatine a day can be just as efficient for increasing intramuscular creatine stores and improving muscle performance. Also, if you take 20 to 30 grams a day, you'll probably get an upset stomach and this can lead to the side effects. Loads of human trials with varying doses have been conducted and the main side effects have been limited to stomach disturbances from taking too much and cramping from not hydrating properly. So yeah, you can get diarrhea and a bit of nausea 
when you take too much creatine at one time, in which case the doses should be split up throughout the day and taking with your meals. And going back to the loading protocol, if you think about it, you probably wanna be taking creatine for a long period of time to reap its benefits. So there's not much point in giving yourself potentially upset stomach from taking too much of it for a, for a week. But on the whole, it's very safe to take. The other question that gets asked a lot is, does taking creatine increase water retention? And this idea that taking it increases your total water content was based on early research showing water retention with higher doses of creatine like 20 grams a day for about a week. So in the short term, yes, it can lead to you putting on weight in the first few days. Creatine is osmotically active. And this basically means that once it's introduced into the muscle cells, it pulls water from the extracellular environment. And this can lead to an increase in the water content within the muscles. But this is not actually a bad thing. About 75% of muscle content is water. And the enhanced hydration can help with protein synthesis and improve muscle function and performance. Also, longer training studies for about five to 10 weeks with creatine supplementation have shown no significant increases in total body water. But if you're competing in a sport that is weight sensitive, like boxing, for instance, you might wanna avoid taking heaps of creatine in the last week or two of your weight cut. And separate to the water retention aspect, you might become heavier as a side effect of taking creatine. Let me explain. You take creatine for a while, your muscles become stronger, your muscle mass increases, and your weight has increased as a result. Is this a bad thing? Probably not. The other question that gets asked is, does taking creatine cause kidney damage? The short answer is no. Pretty much every single study on creatine supplementation has failed to find any significant damage to kidneys as a result of taking it. And this association probably stems from confusion and a lack of understanding about creatine metabolism. So, Creatine is normally metabolized into creatinine, which is eliminated by the kidneys under normal conditions. And when the kidneys can't function properly and they can't filter the blood as well, many metabolites, they sort of get backlogged in the blood. Creatinine is easy to measure. And because of this, it's a biomarker for kidney damage. And we use it in blood tests in the hospital to see whether the creatinine levels are elevated. And if they are, we might su suspect some kidney damage. If you take lowish doses of creatine, like five-ish grams a day or less, you probably won't see an increase in creatinine in normal adults. But if you take high doses, you may cause a false positive. And this means that the increase in creatinine is due to creatine turning into creatinine, which does not signify any actual damage to your kidneys. Another thing related to this was when I first started taking it a few years ago, common gym chat was to cycle off it to prevent damage to kidneys and you don't need to do this either. It's safe for continuous use. So when is the best time to take creatine? Some recommend taking it before as a pre-workout, while others suggest taking it afterwards. The answer is it doesn't matter, as long as you take it around your workout time. And that's when you get the most benefit as opposed to taking it other times during the day. For instance, if you hit the gym in the mornings, you probably want to take it sometime in the morning as opposed to taking it before bed. I don't have a strict regime for this, but I usually have mine after my workouts mixed in with a protein shake. Don't stress too much about the perfect timing for taking it. Just focus on making it a part of your daily routine. The next talking point is a common one. Does taking creatine cause hair loss? This idea originates from a randomized controlled trial that was done in 2009. And they looked at college aged male rugby players who took creatine for three weeks and they experienced a 41% increase in their blood levels of DHT relative to their baseline. And as a result, this theory gained momentum. Regardless of this, the results were still well within the normal range of DHT levels. So what is DHT? DHT or dihydrotestosterone is a metabolite of testosterone and it's formed through the action of an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. In males, DHT can bind to androgen receptors in the hair follicles and cause them to shrink, leading to hair loss. So inhibitors of this enzyme like finasteride are used to treat hair loss in men. Also, as far as I'm aware, there are no studies looking at the effects of taking creatine on hair loss. I don't think it's been directly studied. So yeah, the evidence doesn't indicate that creatine supplementation directly increases testosterone levels, DHT, or even cause hair loss. Okay, so to summarize quickly, creatine is a energy boosting supplement produced from amino acids in your body and your body makes it naturally. And creatine works by improving your power output during resistance exercise, which can lead to putting on muscle mass. It can also lead to enhanced muscle recovery, greater training tolerance, and may even have some cognitive benefits. Dosing varies from three to 10 grams a day, but this depends on your weight, your lean mass, and activity levels. I take around five grams a day. Make a judgment call on what you think is best for you. It's also very cheap, it's safe, 
and it doesn't cause hair loss or kidney damage. And that brings us to the end of this video. Let me know your thoughts below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.